Thank you. Um, so I've got a uh, little time now. I have to kind of race through this a little bit. Uh, it's also quite a, a complex subject. Um, digital humanities was new to Theresa, uh, new to me uh, to an extent, and new to many people I, I meet. So hopefully by the end of this talk, it won't be so new to you. I want to talk about, uh, give you a brief um, definition of digital humanities, what, what we're aiming to do in the digital humanities in the context of broader developments in academe and society, uh, and how um, we in the, in the humanities are trying to work out what relevance we can have in this new data age. And I think some of these issues have relevance also to libraries, who are similarly, if you want, uh, working out and struggling with the impact of the digital. So I want to give you a, a very, very brief introduction to my organisation, which I joined about six weeks ago, so I'm even newer than, than Lorraine is. Um, I want to give you a brief uh, backdrop to uh, the humanities at the moment, how, how they are being challenged, challenged uh, what the digital monies are, and then um, a bit more about, as I say, um, how governments especially, about the, uh, how the EU is requiring of academe to have more social economic impact. Then I want to talk a bit about the li libraries and digital humanities, what commonalities they, ha they have. Uh, and I think all this, in the end, uh, uh, points to a sense of the humanities coming back to what Aristotle called uh, the common good. He made the distinction between science, on the one hand, which was instrumental knowledge, and the humanities, which had no purpose unless they had outputs for ordinary people. So Daria, we've been around now uh, since 2006. Um, we were established as a European Research Infrastructure Consortium just last November, so we've been around fully, in a sense, for uh, just one year. We have now 17 members across the EU. We've uh, been established as an ERIC, this infrastructure, by the European Commission for a 20-year period. We are for a wide variety of research communities in the humanities, from archaeology to literary studies and medieval studies. And we have a, uh, quite a large number of affiliated projects. Uh, we're also quite successful in generating money from Horizon 2020. So in terms of these affiliated projects and our own bids, we've managed to uh, gain about 30 million euros over the past two years. We also provide a network of services. So what are the humanities? Um, it, it, it can depend where you are in the world to an extent. I moved from the UK to Germany, and in Germany, archaeology is very firmly ensconced in, in humanities in terms of how research is evaluated. In the UK, not so much. Um, but here's some uh, general definitions going back some years now. Um, and essentially what the humanities are, I suppose, are a, a method to reflect critically on where we are as human beings. And sometimes, as I say, it's uh, seen as simply a certain category of academic discipline, be it uh, you go from literature to history to philosophy, or it's about, as one person put it here, understanding the human mind and how it's placed in the world. But unfortunately, as compelling as that sounds, the, 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 you know, the human mind is a wonderful instrument. We wouldn't be here without it. Um, students I don't feel that compelled to come along and, and join up to uh, courses any longer, seemingly. There is uh, quite a, a, a panic or a, a dearth in, in humanities around uh, what students want from, from the subject. And this isn't just some, some sort of journalistic um, interpretation. It's keenly felt by people on the ground. Uh, this is from a colleague of mine at Piedmont University, she's a classicist, um, and she is very um, keen that uh, new skills are added to humanities disciplines so that uh, students are attracted and the, the humanities, in that sense, can carry on. Now, that sounds all very uh, uh, dire, um, but there's, there is hope, even though, as we've seen recently, there are huge cuts Especially since the austerity programme from 2007-2008, uh, humanities scholars all over the world have been faced in his, his Amsterdam uh, with, with cuts across the board. And not only, it's not only a Western problem in that sense. Uh, Japan recently, um, in September, announced very uh, draconian cuts to huma the humanities. However, as dire as that, some of that sounds, uh, there, is, there is hope. The hope lies in the fact that we, we are in this data age, this age of flux, of change, of having to be responsive to, to things more quickly. 
and the arts and humanities in the, in the, in the guise of the digital humanities are said to be, or argued to be in some ways, um, more experimental. This aspect of being experimental is very important. So some definitions of digital humanities then. Um, Theresa mentioned it's the confluence, the interaction between computer te technology and, and the humanities. And here are a few uh, definitions that have been called from uh, an ongoing uh, conference, been going for about six years now, and there are in, in, in total 80, uh, 87 um, separate definitions of digital humanities on this website, if you want to go along and click through them all, uh, you'll get a variety of opinions. And that's one of the interesting th things about the digital humanities. Uh, it contains a wide variety of people. It's a very broad church. But essentially, I think the final point is very important there. It's to do with a broader impact on the public. The essential aspect of uh, digital humanities, however, is um, how, how has the massive data that we've, uh, we've got now, the massive digitalization we've, we've seen produced over, the, over many years, how does that have an impact on how humanities are done? And that can be encapsulated very, very easily in, 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 in this particular example here. We've gone from something called close reading, which is the examination of one or two documents, uh, intensive examination of those documents, uh, based on the uh, critical reflection of a single uh, scholar. Uh, to something which is called distant reading, which is uh, looking at all the correspondences in, in huge amounts of data, tens of thousands of documents, and representing it in new ways, and ways in which it can be shared, published in different, 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 a different manner, so that uh, collaboration across disciplines and between different types of humanists can be better uh, affected. But it's not, it's not, about the, it's not just about the, the, the technology, it's rather to do with the, the, the whole impact of digital culture and how, uh, how the digital is shared to such an extent now in, in society at large and the academy that uh, there, there can be this true confluence, uh, true meeting of minds, if you want, between uh, the university and, and uh, society. And I think that uh, aspect, aspect, aspect at the end there in the second quote about what are the emergent public spheres, there we have included digital libraries. And digital libraries are going to be a, a, a pillar for digital humanities in the future. So this aspect of the broader context of digitality and the citizen uh, has been captured by governments across Europe. Here's an extract from uh, the G German federal government digital agenda till 2017. It's basically saying we're all within uh, the, the digital now. It's not a question of knowing there's data or having an app. Uh, it's a question of we are all swimming in data. We are, we are um, uh, recognized in, in so far as we, we register ourselves as data almost. And for the European Union as well, it's extremely important. Uh, they did a, a, a survey um, last year on what constitutes open science. And although interestingly, uh, the sciences themselves uh, only supported the concept to the level of 44%, the, the final uh, point there, uh, iterated by uh, the Director General, uh, General, uh, General of Research and Innovation of the, of the EU, is that we need to, uh, you know, we need to embed um, science in society much more. Citizen science, uh, the involvement of citizens in the creation of science, uh, its dissemination and its use has to be much more systematic. So to, to recap, data is pervasive, uh, citizenship is changing, um, and it needs to be, I think, a broader debate about what constitutes the, the digital citizen. For a long time we've heard about digital literacy, it's been a very important aspect of what libraries do, what libraries talk about. That has been uh, a question of really of asking ourselves, how do we stay safe online? What is the etiquette of, of, of uh, conversing on the internet? Um, but it's much more to do with how we actually interact with things such as how we are governed, how we get healthcare and so forth. So we've gone from things such as this, um, just about 100 years ago, where people would say to themselves, even though we're radical, we're still going to go and vote because we're in a system of governance which recognises there is um, uh, a parliament, a set of parties and so forth, a very hierarchical system of being governed. The internet says now, actually, why do we need politicians? Because we have peer-to-peer -peer networks on the internet, information flows freely. And what the digital humanists are doing is saying, how can we reimagine the data that we've got uh, how can we uh, recast the metaphors that we need to understand about where we are in this data world? And this particular picture here is uh, the sum of data 
garnered from one college in Denmark, and it's trying to really represent the fact that um, any institution, even though you may have a hierarchy, such as the head of uh, the vice chancellor or head of college, it operates in a very distributed democratic way. And that's the point of digital humanities in a way, it's a democratization of, of knowledge. Uh, and we see that, in fact, this democratization of knowledge is already taking place before our eyes. Um, there are huge amounts of people out there who are basically um, uh, picking up the use of data, the tools that data, the tools that you need to manipulate data, and so forth. And uh, we have people who are now called digital humanitarians who are taking it one, one further. It's the impact, if you like, of the skills that digital humanists uh, are propagating and using it in real-world situations. We're seeing the digital humanities accelerating and advancing research practice. And as I say, returning the humanities to the original purpose of wisdom for the common good. Because without this broader impact, uh, the question of the acad academy is literally academic in a way. As I mentioned, there's some examples of digital, digital humanitarians. And so in terms of uh, uh, um, disaster relief and so forth, charting uh, weather patterns and so forth, and how their impact on, on, uh, on people in, say, tropical zones, uh, there are several, several organisations now who are using open data to affect better responses. And this, I think, is critical. This is a slide that uh, shows you examples of the use of a small computer device, which is very inexpensive, called the Raspberry Pi, um, and the educational programme that goes along with that. And so there's a huge range of uh, issues that people are concerned, ordinary people are concerned with, going from conservation to improving education around the world. And all this is taking place beyond libraries, if you want, and beyond, beyond the academy. So I think it's important that libraries and the academy work together to support the use that citizens want to make of these, these new tools, this new flow of data that we have. So why libraries? I think uh, libraries are important because, in fact, there is a very similar set of, of criteria and there's a very similar agenda uh, existing between libraries now faced with the likes of we've had Google and so forth for a long time now, and the digital, huma digital humanities who are also faced with the question of how and why are you relevant? And so this is a list of, of criteria supplied by one uh, quite um, forward-looking digital humanist, and I think, I, well, I hope that you would agree that uh, this, this list correspond, would, would correspond to some of the things that you yourselves would want to see affected. So, um, for, this is from the point of view of digital uh, uh, humanists, if you like. Uh, digital humanists um, are, are basically those who go to libraries, museums, and archives and try to get the content transformed from static to digital, uh, from the digital to data. So, in other words, reuse, uh, reuse information about, about content is then itself the subject of study. Um, and, and in that sense, libraries, archives, and museums have been at the start of digital humanities uh, in that symbiotic relationship. But you have yourselves uh, have a long heritage of dealing with the public. Academics, especially in the UK where I've just come from, uh, are, are asked to have this impact on, on, the, on the public. Um, libraries, museums, and archives can help have that hub effect for, for academics and their work. Um, also, we've, as I mentioned, we've got, we've got cuts at the same time we have to, have to uh, produce new ways of working um, and a devolved sense of having libraries out there in the community who can sustain the digital humanities and the humanities in a new sense is extremely important. More shoulders means lighter work. It also um, continues with some of the um, already established aspects of the way libraries have been working. So instead of having the idea of you deliver books to people, you actually create a space in which people create their own content, so-called maker spaces, and extends and deepens your pedagogic role. And I think it strengthens the relevance of, of both uh, sets of, of people. So to sum up, uh, dishumanists and libraries are constantly refining their significance of modes of response in the, in the data age. We both want to transform content to make it more applicable in this new age. We face disruption, but we face it boldly with experimentation. We want to make sure that knowledge is democratic. We question critically where it comes from and how it's produced, who gets to see it. We know that data is pervasive, but are the skills and networks are needed to comprehend it? Uh, I'm not sure that they are. Let's make sure they are. So this is uh, a further quote, just to um, add the cherry on the cake, basically summarizing the fact that uh, digital humanists see their cause as the same with libraries. So basically, it's about accessibility of information. Information is changing constantly. How do we keep up with that, that notion? 
and the requirement to have impact. So these are my thanks and acknowledgements. And I can be uh, I'm accessible later on myself uh, at, the, at the cafe, and uh, people can email me with questions beyond that as well. Thank you very much.